Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Mayon, as well, you, sir. Nice to see you. And a gentleman you who needs no introduction. He needs no. <laughs> Mr. President. And a lady who needs so no introduction. Nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you. Too long between breaths. <laughs> this is your altar boy, finally. Well, my altar boy, we finally meet. What a temple to be meeting at. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Gina. Yes. Well, the last time. Seen her in seven years. Yes. Yeah, and you haven't seen her since she was five. This is the day. She was at the farm at the election. Nice to see you. Yeah, and this is my oldest son, Sean. Nice to see you. And this is my youngest son's wife, Mia. Nice and this is to son Nice to meet you, Mr. Good to see you. Nice to see you, sir. Now, I'm going to take that. What? I'm following your lead. Oh, sir. I'll tell you what. You're going to say stay right there, and I'm going to stand in the middle and make sure everything is done right. Yes, sir. He makes sure that I read right all the time. <laughs> in keeping with uh, naval traditions, I'd like to present you, Chris, with your honorable discharge papers, of course, first. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And uh, you've got to get out before they can put you back in. Yeah, you're now a civilian. That's right. <laughs> now, this is not point to run. You sure you, you, sure you want to <laughs> yeah, stay? Yeah. If, you, if, if you really want to do this, please raise your right hand. Mm. You repeat after me. I, Christopher Holly Kilpatrick. I, Christopher Holly Kilpatrick. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. And the orders of the officers appointed over me. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. According to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Number four. Mr. President, I have a certificate of reenlistment signed by you to present to Christopher. Yes, I'm very pleased and proud to do this and with a thank you on behalf of the people of the United States for what you're doing. I tell you, it's a whole lot easier putting four more years in my job than it is in yours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. President, I'd like to present to you, if I may, the commanding officer of my ship. Uh, Mr. President, it's an honor to be here with Senior Chief Petty Officer Kilpatrick on the occasion of his reenlistment. The officers and the men of the Nicholas wanted me to present this ship's plaque to you and tell you that it's an honor to serve you and our country. Thank you very well, much. Thank you very much, Commander. Sir, please give them my heartfelt thanks. Sir, I sure will. Thank I'm you. Most grateful. Thank you. Now I think that there's a family photo that ought to be taken over here in front of the fireplace. And now, all the Hall of Kilpatrick's. Gosh, that's a thundering bird. <laughs> well, thank you. And we well, this came from the phone conversation. That's right. Steve, he's going to be in the merger building. I'm not photogenic. I'm not photogenic. I don't want to be. Well, I'm sorry. You came to the shindig. Pay for it. Well, I'm responsible. Can you reach us? Sure. Squeeze him a little bit. Squeeze him a little Okay. <laughs> there we go. Everyone's looking right here. Good. He smiles. See, see some teeth there. <laughs> Say McDonald burgers. McDonald burgers. <laughs> One more. Everyone's looking right here. Great. Thank you. This is quite who are we relieving in the Gulf? Wainwright, Roberts, Simpson, and Jack Are we relieving four of them at once? Good <laughs> ship. Uh, well, <laughs> very good ship. Oh, thank you. We've been here in the. Yeah. I mean, the last time you saw her was about that high and clutching the doll. <laughs> it shows you just how things have grown since you've been there. That's all. It's going to put away their hair and keep it hot there. It meant the best. Did you ever, did you ever know, both of you, how that telephone conversation came about? I have heard my family. I want to hear your side of it. I well, always met the helicopter down there. Yes. And uh, 
on the way in was telling me about the, the fellow who's been there all week putting the phones in. Mm -hmm. And I was astounded. I said, what do you mean? Well, he said, wherever you go, you have to have phone. And you can reach anyone, ever, any place, and so forth. And that was the first time I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I got 20 minutes away from the White House, but I, I got to have a... Well, anyway, and then he told me about his experience, his challenge to them when they said, could anyone, any place. And uh, he succeeded in having a phone conversation <laughs> with, uh, as a result of challenging them with... Uh, uh, your Kevin. brother. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, that's right. Kevin was yeah. in Abidjan at the yeah. embassy in, in yeah. Ivory Coast, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he mentioned you. And this time they said no. Well, he said, you said you could... He said, no, the fleet's on maneuvers. When it's on maneuvers, only the president can reach them. And we went on in the house, and I met somebody there. And I thought that was kind of a shame to be separated. So I went back out and asked him if it was really true that I could, and they said yes. And uh, the result of that was, uh, I said, forget it. <laughs> that was the result then that you wrote me that astounding letter of what all happened. I literally <laughs> turned the Navy inside out, I think, well, with that call. It was absolutely incredible because we were changing formations. We had two carrier groups of aircraft up. Uh, it was just no place for a sane quartermaster with all these radio conversations going. And if you've never been into a combat information center of a ship during operations like that, you can't imagine how intense it is. It makes O'Hara Airport look like a clam boat. You I'll made that plane in your letter. And I walked right back out again. Your call came in, and in about 30 seconds, complete radio silence on every circuit. It just that quick. You and told me that even Hollywood could not have silenced the air. <laughs> no, even Hollywood could not have silenced the air that fast. Uh, and uh, then that was the result. Did the rest of you know then why I call him my altar boy? Yes, yes. You know that's part of the story. Yeah, you know all of that. Oh, you know, that, that story has followed me around the fleet ever since. <laughs> you would not believe how many absolute strangers in the Navy I have met. I said, oh, you're the one the president called. I'm going, well, I mean, it was Sunday. Don't you talk to your president on Sunday? Well, listen, that made a hero for me, uh, out of me, because uh, just very shortly thereafter, uh, I was helicoptered out off uh, Santa Cruz Island to one of our aircraft carriers, and uh, the story had preceded me there. They took you in my helicopter? Uh, yeah. Have you ever landed on a carrier in uh, one no, of those trouble? No. no. Just, just That's so. Uh, I know. Yeah. It's not for a horse cavalry. <laughs> does the uh, does the commander uh, yeah, yeah. know why you're the known as the altar boy? He no. does now. He yeah, does now. We, we, uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, all the presidents and all of the, the political people they always visit these great big aircraft carriers with, with six thousand, eight thousand people on board. It's the little ships, you know, things like the Nicholas that I'm on. I'm on we have maximum two hundred people generally around 170. We're the ones that are carrying the load. You go out to the Gulf, we're the ones running the convoys. You go on a fleet exercise, we're the ones getting everywhere. And it's these little guys, these little tiny spit kits, they're the ones that somebody ought to come down and say, hey, we know you're there. And without you, all these big monsters wouldn't be worth what it takes to build them. He's trying to invite you to come to the <laughs> I see that. No, no, I, my executive officer, told me that if I invited you to our ship, he would hang me. Uh, hmm. Well, he resigned to the executive officer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you a little secret about my job. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not to blame for that <laughs> discrimination there. <laughs> Somebody tells me where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'm going to find out. <laughs> my wife does that to me. At least I know who it is. She's up the day schedule and says, oh, this is where I'm going. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like every 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, it's been wonderful to see you at last. Oh, this has been the highlight of my career. This is my last four years you know, to be re-enlisted in this fashion. You'll probably follow me around read along with the altar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very pleased that it will. Oh, I am. So excited to have you. And congratulations again. She's had a busy year. She met the Pope in September. Oh. Well.
Bye-bye, Jay, good to see you. Give my best hands,